At first glance, the interior of the cabin may appear to be the simplest aspect of a modern aircraft. Seats, sidewall panels, restrooms, and overhead bins do not appear as technologically complex as engines, avionics, or composite wings. However, the actual situation is entirely different. Designing and manufacturing aircraft interiors is a highly precise, certification-intensive, engineering-driven discipline. For many years, this niche was controlled primarily by a small number of major foreign suppliers. Russia also relied on them until the year 2022 abruptly ended that dependence. Today, Russia is rebuilding its cabin interiors industry nearly from the ground up and at an impressive pace. The outcome represents one of the fastest industrial recoveries in its civil aviation sector. To fully understand the intricacies of aircraft interiors, consider a simple example. Imagine furnishing a compact studio apartment, a sofa, a wardrobe, a kitchenette, a small toilet, and proper lighting. Add decorative panels for the walls and ceiling. With some effort, some financial investment, and a sense of taste, one can create a comfortable and attractive interior. Now scale this project to a passenger airplane. The term furniture is replaced with structural components. The sofa becomes crashworthy seating. The kitchenette becomes a galley designed to withstand emergency loads. Even decorative panels turn into integral parts of a complete safety system. Every component must be lightweight, fire-resistant, non-toxic, impact-resistant, anti-static, and capable of functioning across a temperature range from minus 55 degrees Celsius to plus 85 degrees Celsius. Materials must resist mold, handle cabin decompression, and remain functional under conditions no ordinary household product would experience. Aircraft components must also meet fire performance standards far beyond those of everyday materials. They must self-extinguish after direct flame exposure, produce minimal toxic vapors, and prevent dripping molten plastic. Thermal release limits ensure passengers are protected from heat transfer during a fire. Some interior components must even serve structural roles or withstand firearm impacts according to international safety standards. Therefore, what appears to be furniture is actually aerospace-grade equipment. Once materials are certified, Designers must engineer components that withstand substantial forces. Aviation standards require that all items in the cabin remain secured during emergency accelerations. Overhead compartments illustrate this clearly. A superjet overhead bin is rated to hold approximately 71 kilograms of luggage. But during certification, it must withstand a crash load of 639 kilograms without failing. Test benches push the limit further, applying roughly 1,150 kilograms. For the MC-21, the numbers are even higher, with containers expected to endure almost 2 metric tons. Seats face even more demanding requirements. They must resist a 16G impact load, roughly equal to the weight of a full-grown hippopotamus falling on them. Despite such forces, they must maintain integrity even if the aircraft floor beneath collapses. This is why ordinary household fabrics last only a few months in airliners, while aviation textiles, reinforced with materials such as Kevlar, remain functional for years. Meeting certification standards is only the beginning. Cabin designers must also satisfy airlines, whose expectations have risen sharply. Airlines want a unified and sophisticated interior across all elements, Yet achieving this harmony is complex. If even one decorative finish, such as a laminate or film, becomes unavailable, the entire color scheme may need redesign. Weight limits complicate matters further. Lead designers enforce strict mass requirements for each component because small overruns multiply into major penalties when repeated across the cabin. An extra few kilograms per module can significantly reduce fuel efficiency and harm airline economics. Interior teams must therefore balance certification, aesthetics, manufacturability, and ultra-lightweight engineering at the same time. 
For many years, Russia lacked a domestic maker capable of producing a fully certified aircraft interior in the volumes required for modern commercial jets. During the early years of the Superjet and the MC-21, Russia, like many other programs, depended on major foreign integrators. These companies designed, integrated, and supplied full interior packages using their global networks and expertise. This model worked until the year 2022, when international partners withdrew. Suddenly, Russia had advanced airframes but no interiors to complete aircraft production and certification. The Yakovlev Design Bureau had to assume the role of integrator, a position normally held by large multinational firms employing thousands of engineers at Yakovlev explain that the transition required rapid organizational restructuring. The Bureau had to design the entire interior from scratch, develop complete technical documentation, coordinate domestic subcontractors, and secure certification under intense time pressure. Fifteen interconnected technical specifications were created for the SJ-100, each covering a key aspect of cabin design. These documents had to reflect safety requirements while also matching the real manufacturing capabilities of Russian companies that were still building expertise in this field. A nationwide search for qualified producers followed. Many skilled companies were active in the VIP jet interior market, where small but highly capable teams maintained advanced craftsmanship and certification knowledge. Russia also adopted a strategy of unifying interior solutions for both the SJ-100 and the MC-21, allowing both programs to use the same suppliers. This improved production efficiency and reduced risk. One major participant in the renewed industry is the Kazan-based company Aviation Interiors, it manufactures cabin sidewall panels, ceilings, and large items such as galleys, lavatories, and wardrobes, known in the industry as monuments. The company also produces business class seats for the MC-21, further developing domestic expertise. Aerospace Systems, part of the Promtech Corporation, manufactures economy class seats for both the SJ-100 and the MC-21. It also supplies water vacuum systems for both aircraft and interior lighting for the SJ-100. Meanwhile, the oxygen supply system is provided by Respirator in Orokovo Zuyevo, a long-established Russian manufacturer. Together, these companies form the foundation of Russia's renewed aircraft interior sector. Progress has been impressive. After the technical specifications were issued in 2022, the first complete cabin panel assembly was installed on an experimental SJ-100 in December 2024. By August 2025, Kazan delivered a fully equipped interior for aircraft number 97005, the second serial SJ-100. In June 2025, Aviation Interiors components underwent trial installation on MC-21 prototype number 0013. Engineers reported that workmanship met international standards and that some assemblies were even easier to install than foreign equivalents. Yavlov specialists emphasize that passengers will notice no difference between domestic and imported interiors. Although full compatibility with older Superjet 100s was not required, many mounting principles were preserved, allowing future retrofits. Interior installation must proceed without delay because many certification tests require a fully assembled cabin. For example, the environmental control system, including pressurization and air conditioning, cannot be tested without interior components. Fire safety tests, evacuation drills, and functional evaluations likewise depend on completed interiors. Although some components are still in qualification, most have already passed required testing. Engineers are confident that interiors will not delay mass production of the SJ-100 or the MC-21. The revival of Russia's aircraft interior industry represents more than import replacement. It marks the rebirth of an entire industrial sector that had been dormant for decades. New specialized suppliers have emerged. Yakovlev has become a full-scale interior integrator 
and both national aircraft programs now use a unified and scalable technological platform. Development has accelerated, and domestic components have demonstrated their ability to meet strict international standards. Most importantly, Russia is now achieving full independence in a field of civil aviation that once seemed permanently outsourced. What began as a crisis response has evolved into a technological renaissance, an essential step toward a fully self-reliant aviation industry. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us.